Today we're going to be taking a look at the Creality HI. I guess it's called the Creality High. And basically what this is, is Creality's best version of the Ender 3 so far. It shares a lot of hardware in common with the K2 Plus, and a lot of the specs seem to be borrowed from the Bamboo Lab A1. Now it has a multicolor unit, and there's a lot of really surprising features built into this machine, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. Creality sent this machine to me for free for review, but this video doesn't really have a sponsor other than the great people over on Patreon. So thank you guys for supporting my work. Now let's get to the video. Today we're taking a look at the Creality HI. It's basically the next generation of the Ender 3. And as you can see, it's printing away. There's a lot of interesting things about this machine, so we'll talk about all of it. But the first thing you need to know about it is it's got a build volume of about 250 by 250 and it's got a frame that looks really similar to the Bamboo Lab A1, and it's got this multicolor CFS unit compatibility baked in. So you can print multicolor prints with this thing. And right now I'm just firing up a basic test print. This is checking the speed of the machine. Now I've undone a bunch of covers here so we can take a look at the guts of the printer. So let's take a look, I'll just pull this off. And we can see all of the uh, the stuff inside of here, some circuit boards, the extruder, dual part cooling fans here. We've got two 50-15 fans, so it should have tons of airflow for really fast part cooling. The actual fan ducts at the tips, they're made out of a silicone rubber, so if they bump into something, it shouldn't be an issue, and it'll also be able to withstand high temperatures without melting. It looks like we've got a pretty long melt zone in there, as well as a bunch of connectors here. So if you wanted to reconfigure this and install your own part cooling for some reason, I don't see why you would need to, but you could do that. So it's somewhat moddable, but I don't think that's the point of this machine. It's supposed to be a plug and play machine similar to the Bamboo Lab A1, but larger size than the regular Ender 3, built in multicolor unit capabilities. And it's also got this bumper on the side over here to help clear away any poos that it creates. So it'll just purge there and uh, flick that away into the abyss off the edge of the desk. So what I'm printing out right now is called the speed test. So this will be able to show us how fast this printer can go. And it should be pretty fast because uh, we'll take a look underneath the printer as soon as this print is done. But around back here, we can see the motor that they're using. It's got a little black cover on it which means it's probably the same type of motors that are being used on the Creality K2 Plus. The K2 Plus is using these uh, special type of stepper motors. They're basically uh, closed loop servo motors. So they're gonna be quieter, faster, more powerful. And as you can see, if I try to bump this, it's not really messing up the print. I mean, whether it's the print head or the actual, uh, the bed itself, my bumps and perturbations are not ruining the print because it's got some closed loop control there. Okay, so as soon as it finishes up these solid layers, we should be able to see how fast this can go. It's just gonna print like a single walled type of speed test and it should be pretty impressive. But while it's finishing up that layer, let's look at some other stuff here. These side extrusions are really similar to the Bamboo Lab A1 and uh, you know, you've got a screw inside of there and probably a linear bearing. If you want, you can attach a spool holder up top here. This I just kind of attached to see what it looks like, but for the most part, you'll just take this off if you've bought the multicolor combo kit. You won't need this, so yeah, we can just leave this clean. It doesn't look like there's any way to mount this to the top here, unless you were to build some kind of structure, like some kind of custom print that you know, basically makes this into a shelving unit and allows you to put that on top. I would probably like to do that or have some way to put the printer on top of the multicolor unit, but then opening it would be kind of a pain. So yeah, if there's some way to attach this to the top here, I'd be interested in doing that. In terms of assembly, this was faster to put together than the Bamboo Lab A1. All you had to do is put four screws in, one, two on the left side, three, four on the right side, uh, so four total, and then there's just three plugs that you have to plug in, and then this thing's pretty much ready to go. If you want to do the multicolor unit, then there's a couple more wires you have to install, but it's really easy to use. Now, 
We've got a tilting screen here. I can tip this up and down. I can also fold this back. But this just gives me a couple more viewing angles and it's a nice color touch screen. Again, really similar to the Bamboo Lab A1. You can kind of tell what they were benchmarking when they designed this printer. All right, and let's take a look under here. I saw some interesting stuff. So they're using a die cast aluminum base plate here. That's really similar to the Bamboo Lab A1, as is this motion system right here. You've got these steel rods embedded into a aluminum part. Then you've got little metal wheels rolling on that. Got an RFID tag on the side. Let's see if I can peel away some kind of plastic cover. There we go. I'm not sure what this RFID tag is for. It's probably to like read the spool of filament. Having that hardware there just makes it so that if they want to program some extra capabilities, whether that's allowing your phone to tap this to pair it or something, there's all sorts of stuff you can do with that. Just looking at how far I can slide the carriage and the bed back and forth, it looks like this printer could go up to 280 by 280 with a little bit of margin on both sides. Like from pillar to pillar, it's 285 millimeters. But I think you could actually reprogram this to use a 280 by 280 millimeter bed. So that's kind of interesting. Maybe if you really wanted to make this printer bigger, you could. It doesn't say the specs in terms of the printable area on the front here like it does on some of the other printers. But if we look back here, well, I can't see if it says the actual printable area. But I think it's 250 or 256 by 256. Again, benchmarking that, uh, that Bamboo Lab A1. Now, this seems kind of slow to me. I bet this can go faster, so let's try turning it up. Wow, there's a bunch of stuff here. It's got a little camera and a light built in up here. And then there's lights built into the front. Those are designed to illuminate this Creality logo when that's all put together. But um, right now the lights are just kind of shining on me. So I wonder if there's a way to turn up the speed here. So it says it's normal speed. Let's bump it up to ultra fast speed. Now this thing's got a nice melt zone and really powerful part cooling fans. So I think this thing should be able to go faster than the Bamboo Lab A1 just because of all the hardware on the hot end there. It does automatic bed leveling by touching the nozzle to the bed. So that helps make sure you get a really nice first layer. You can kind of look at the first layer of this print and get an idea of what it's like. Okay, and then let's take a look underneath the machine. What's all going on under here? So this is where it kind of gets interesting for me. It looks really similar to the K1 Max. And you can actually see this belt there's a little cutout for the belt there. This whole bottom piece was die cast out of aluminum. So it's got all of the features baked in. There's a little slider in the back for tensioning that belt. It looks like it could handle a larger belt. Like you could go up to a 10 millimeter belt in here probably. You just have to change out the drive pulley. But maybe they decided they didn't need that much belt for this application. Um, there's the little screen and it's got the little ribbon cable there that allows all the flexibility and there's your main board. Now I think this is running a version of Clipper, some kind of Creality modified version that allows support for the CFS system and all this high speed goodness. So this is Creality's first bed slinger that has an AC heated bed. They used a really thick cord on the back so you can see this isn't gonna get damaged by flexing. It's way overkill. Super beefy cable there. And uh, yeah, let me know what else you wanna know about this thing. Looks like it's using a smaller power supply. And yeah, they use as regular stepper motors for the Z axis. It's using those closed loop servo motors for X and Y, which should help you get extra speed and precision. Now the print quality on this thing doesn't look the best only on this test print because I was flipping it upside down and stuff while the printer was running and that's never good for the print quality. But also I've taken off these two plastic covers. That's why I'm using these little foam spacers at the bottom to keep it from overheating. I just wanted to take these off so that you could see what's going on under there. But these are just injection molded plastic with some rubber feet on them. And I'll put this back together shortly and I'll run a longer test print so you can see the print quality. All right, so I got to run, but we're going to check and see if the printer uh, did the thing. And it looks like the print 
Turned out just great. What do you know? Great quality. All right. Let's just uh, get that unstuck from the build tray. Would you look at that? A uh, really great print. It's actually quite spectacular, the quality there. Would you look at that? Really good layer lines. Great quality. Now, I don't really like this type of bed. This is, um, well, I don't know what type of bed this is. I thought it was, a, I thought it wasn't a PEI, but it actually looks like it is. Kind of looks like a polycarbonate type texture, but it's PEI. It's more of a fine grain, uh, powder coated spring steel sheet. Works really good. I'm just going to turn this thing off because I'm going to be out of the office for a little bit. So let's just turn that sucker off and unplug it for good measure.